Good morning. Thanks for joining me at Coffee with Corey. I met with a potential client this week that's buying their home and they've already bought a second home or their next home and they're remodeling it. And uh, it's projected to be done in about three months. So they, they, they're with the, the same question that I get often. Uh, when people are buying one home and they're they're either going to build another one or they're going to remodel one and move in the the tendency is to always want to say okay well when do i have to list my current house for sale to be able to line things up perfectly so my house is done and i'm moving in and i can only have to move once and i'm minimizing the time with uh, with two houses or i don't have two houses at all uh, which could be the case if you're if you're building a home when you and so I, I always tell people, you have to plan for one of those two scenarios. So if moving uh, twice is an absolute no-fly zone for you, and you just refuse to do that, then you're probably gonna wanna wait till you're a month and a half out or thereabouts uh, with your next house being done so that you don't just artificially set yourself up to have to turn buyers away. Because there's gonna be plenty of buyers that come to your home, they're gonna wanna close in 45-ish days, 30 to 45-ish days. Um, conversely, if you're looking, you're going, there's no way that I'd want to own two houses, and uh, you're looking at building a, home, a new home for yourself, well, then you pretty much need to put your home up for sale, get a buyer, move to a rental, and then start building your house so that you just know that you don't have that risk of having two houses. And there's really no right or wrong answer. It's just talking through those scenarios with your real estate professional and uh, it's coming up with whatever works best for you. The, the, um, the whole aspect, if you're willing to own two houses, but you'd really prefer to you know, try to just match those um, closing dates up, you can always list with your real estate agent, have them not uh, start advertising it or putting it on multiple listing, and just start prospecting for their own buyers so they can try and find that perfect buyer that's willing to give you what you want for your house uh, plus marrying up that closing date that you really need that's maybe a little further out than what most buyers might um, expect or, or want. Um, so again, like I say almost every week, work with a real estate professional that you know and trust. One, you know, that type of scenario, it really is helpful if you've been around the block for a little while as a real estate agent, because then you've hopefully got a, a pool of buyers that you can draw from right away. Um, so that's the real estate item I wanted to touch on. I also wanted to touch on um, another song because I, I have one come on my uh, playlist this week that I had not heard for, oh my gosh, it's, it's probably been five years or more, but uh, Minutes to Memories by John Mellencamp. Um, I think he was still maybe even going by John Cougar Mellencamp um, at that point in time. Um, there, he's talking about, it, it, the, the story is, um, a young man sitting next to an old man on a long bus ride. And uh, there's a point in that song where you know the old man's giving him wisdom through the whole song. And uh, um, it's John Mellencamp says, he fell asleep with his head against the window, said, an honest man's pillow is his peace of mind. And uh, you know, that, that, uh, that stuck with me a long time. Um, when I first heard that song back when I was in college, and uh, you know, I, I, I've always really equated that to just try to do the right thing, try and be an, as honest as you can in your dealings, um, and it allows you to sleep well at night, regardless of where you're laying your head. And uh, I think I think there's a lot of truth in that. Um, I'd encourage everyone to try and live that way as best you can. I, I'm certainly no saint. Those of you that know me know that. And um, but you just try the best you can every day, and. Uh, you know, I, I found that really holds true when you got when you got less uh, troubles on your mind and less things that you're really worried about that you that you've uh, left unsaid or left undone. Um, it just allows you to sleep a lot better at night. Um, a footnote with that, um, also over my right shoulder, and you can't see it in the frame, but is a is a news article, and I'm, I'm sure we'll show a little snippet of it here, but. A news article of uh, the time back in 1999 when I got a chance to sing on stage with John Mellencamp. Um, definitely, uh, I, you know, people like to say 15 minutes of fame. It's probably 15 seconds of fame, but man, it was really cool. And uh, so I, that was back in the days before people were carrying cell phones with cameras all over the place. So there's no proof, uh, there's no video or photo evidence of it. 
Um, the article that was in the paper was uh, me calling the, uh, the paper, asking them if they by chance had any photos. They didn't, uh, but they ran a news article about it and uh, then I mailed it into Mellencamp afterwards and, and either he signed it or a 22 year old intern working at his office signed it, but nonetheless, it's got John, John Mellencamp's name on it. Um, so that's my little, uh, my little brush with fame way back in the day and I uh, wanted to share that with you. So I appreciate you joining me again this morning and I hope to see you next time at Coffee with Corey.